Welcome back to the 13 days of Dragon Ball Z, where today I'll be reviewing the latter portion of the Cooler series, simply titled The Return of Cooler. The Toei English title for this film is Clash, 10 Billion Powerful Warriors. The premise for this movie is that a planet called the Big Getty Star absorbs all of Cooler's remains from the last movie and kept him alive through a computer machine, so essentially it's a silly way to explain that Cooler is back and stronger than ever. The star eventually arrives to Nunamic, and Cooler's army of robots enslave the Namekians. Goku and the gang are aware of this and fly to Namek to stop Cooler with his plan to grow infinitely stronger over time. Piccolo, Krillin and Gohan take on the robot army and fail because they were punching it head on, and they kill them by attacking head on. I know Piccolo explains that if you put your key into one attack, it'll destroy the robots, which makes sense, but it's not executed well. I also hate how Krillin has become just comic relief with these movies, and it seems like it's every single fucking one. They always have the same joke about Krillin attacking an enemy, and then he just gets defeated with ease. First of all, it's not funny, and secondly, it reduces the importance of the character significantly. At least that's what it seems like. It's revealed throughout the movie that Cool is now a metal life form, being much stronger than before, and Goku and the newly formed Metal Cooler fight it out. The art and animation is sloppy, and is not acceptable for a DBZ movie. The last Cooler movie brought in $16.2 million, if you convert it from yen, and you're telling me that they couldn't do a better job of the animation and art? What were they thinking? Thankfully it only seems to plague the Goku vs Cooler fight for some reason, and then the rest looks okay I guess. The execution and concept of bringing back Cooler was actually kinda lazy, but I guess they wanted to shoehorn him in because of the last movie was so successful. It seems like Toei just recycled the whole Mecha Freezer concept and just creating a deeper backstory to it, one that is pretty uninteresting. If you go and watch this movie now, you will be disappointed. The only two saving graces is the Kikuchi soundtrack and Vegeta being there in the movie, but since Vegeta is my favourite character throughout the whole entire franchise, it's a no-brainer that I like him in these movies. Also, it is pretty weird that Goku went Kaioken first instead of a Super Saiyan. According to the time placement, this movie is set after Vegeta can go Super Saiyan, which means that Goku can transform at will at this point. There are two scenarios that are going on in my mind on why he went Kaioken. Number one is that Toei just fucked up and they aren't fact checking anything. Or my second scenario that Goku went Kaioken because he was sure about winning, similar to how in Super he went all of his Super Saiyan forms against Beerus. This second theory is less plausible due to the Kaioken draining his body significantly, so that would just be a stupid move in battle sense. It is just in order to create a false sense of tension, and it doesn't work well at all. So yeah, to conclude, the Return of Cooler movie is the worst movie I've reviewed so far. With terrible animation and art, jokes that don't pay off, the action isn't too exciting, the fucked up time placement, and a jumbled plot, I'd give this a not solid 2 out of 5 Dragon Balls.